Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome on the Red Couch, live here at Hanover Fair 2013. My name is Kilian Müller. I am CEO of Publish Industry Group, an important German publishing company with several lead magazines on technologies. During the whole Hanover Fair, we talk about important with important industry leaders about subjects that concern. Right now, I would like to welcome Ms. Kateri Callahan. Thank you. President of the Alliance to Save Energy, ASE, from the United States of America. We will talk about energy efficiency, the quickest, easiest, and cheapest road to a new energy future. Kateri, welcome on the Red Couch. Thank you. It's so good to be here, Kellen. Kateri, ASE is a premier non-government organization headquartered in Washington, D.C., that worked for more than three decades now. Uh, to advance energy efficiency worldwide. Can you give us a brief summary on the mission and the key strategies of ASE? Sure. Well, we work, as you said, worldwide to advance energy efficiency, and we do that for the economic benefits mm -hmm. that being more energy productive brings, the energy security benefits, and, of course, the environmental benefits. Mm -hmm. So we're not an environmental group, um, though we do, in our pursuit of energy efficiency, good environmental work. We do policy work, education. We actually do some market transformation activities and technology demonstration. So a wide array of activities all around the world, all sectors of the economy, mm -hmm. and we're just driving energy efficiency because it brings so many good things with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ASE, B ASE has been founded in 1977. Right. What was, that is 35 years now. 35 years, So it's yeah. a long time. It is, w it is. What was the initial location for starting ASE? The impetus for the founding of the alliance was the oil embargo back in the 70s, oh, okay. if you remember that, and we had a resulting energy crisis in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And two sitting members of Congress came together and said, if we were going to tackle the energy issues that confronted the United States, we needed an alliance of government interests, mm -hmm. business interests, labor, the environmentalists, all to come together and work together. Mm -hmm. and Therefore, they created this alliance to save energy of all of those different sectors. Mm -hmm. um, after the oil embargo and the energy crisis, um, the bottom fell out of the price of oil, and we got a, a little complacent in the U.S. for a couple of decades and really didn't focus on energy the way that we should have and taking care of business. Um, there was a renaissance for energy efficiency right. and really working on that beginning in the early 2000s because, once again, the United States went into an energy crisis with skyrocketing prices for both oil and natural gas. And so we put a laser focus again on trying to become more energy product productive. I'm hopeful that we're going to continue that now and not go back into lull, a lull and, and be complacent because we have cheap natural gas in the United States now. Now today, yeah. yeah. But looking back, I mean, you've come a long way. Which are, from your point of view, the major milestones that you have reached? Well, I think we're very proud because over the course of the last 35 years, we've doubled energy productivity in the United States. Oh, okay. And we've helped to do All that right. as the yeah. Alliance to Save Energy because we helped to put in place building energy codes to mm -hmm. make sure that all of our buildings, new construction and major renovations meet certain energy efficiency levels. Appliance standards for refrigerators, for dishwashers, mm -hmm. for air conditioning units. We've put those in place for cars. Mm -hmm. uh, we just increased our cafe standards once again. Mm -hmm. So it's really been a, a foundation of policy work at the local, state, and at the federal level that have allowed us to advance energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. And the Alliance has been involved in all of those different activities. We also have educated consumers. We've had award-winning consumer education and outreach campaigns, um, and that's been very, uh, we're very proud of that, and I think it's been very effective in making people aware that they can save money by saving energy, and oh, by the way, they can do something good for the environment, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. a, lots of, a lot of things that you already did. What is the status quo comparing energy efficiency in the U.S. Uh, with Europe, Asia, and maybe also emerging regions? Well, you're German, mm -hmm. and so we, we <laughs> strive to be like you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Germany is one Thank of the you. most energy efficient, particularly for an industrialized yeah. country, one of the most energy efficient in the world. Um, and you have a goal here of increasing your energy efficiency 50% by 2050. And so you're already at a bar well above the United States and okay. going further. Um, Japan is another model for the United States to look at. They have the most energy efficient. If you, if you look at the units of energy required per yeah. GDP, um, they 
they have, they're the best. They're the gold standard. Um, and they have put in place all 25 energy efficiency recommendations that were created by the International Energy Agency, the IEA. So they're the only country in the world that's done that. Mm -hmm. So we, as the United States, have a ways to go. We're only the ninth most energy productive country in the world. Okay. Um, but we have established a goal at the Alliance mm -hmm. to Save Energy to double energy productivity in the U.S. between now and 2030. And so to do in about 18 years what we did in 35 years before. So really cutting that in half. And we're really pleased that the president uh, announced that he's adopted that goal for the country. President Obama in his inaugural address said mm -hmm. in the United States we're going to double energy productivity between now and 2030. Yeah. So we've got the president on our side. Okay, so a good way to go now. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned this energy 2030 uh, goal mm -hmm. and um, ASE announced its eight energy 2030 recommendations mm -hmm. for that. Could you give a, uh, us a short overview of the major demands and also maybe your strategy recommendations for that? Sure, sure. Well, we, we put together about 50 different rec recommendations yes. for state level, local level governments, the federal government, and the private sector. So we made recommendations on how all those yeah. key stakeholders ought to move forward. And all of the recommendations, all 50 of them, are built around a strategy that's three-pronged, invest. Mm -hmm. So invest in new technology, invest in deploying yeah. new technology as it comes forward. The second is to modernize. Um, so as you look at modernizing plants, at buildings, at our facilities, yeah. look at investing in energy efficiency. And the third is educate. So make people aware of the energy mm -hmm. and how they, the, how they use energy and how they can improve their energy use. Mm -hmm. We waste in the United States right now 58% of the energy energy that we consume. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot that we can do. So again, our strategies are based around investment, modernization, mm -hmm. and education. Um, and we believe that that's really the path forward to get energy, to get us to be energy productive. Mm -hmm. A three-pillar strategy. Mm -hmm. what, what would be the expected impacts and benefits of doubling productivity well, by huge. 2030? They're huge, and that's <laughs> okay. why the president, I think, um, rightly put us on that path yeah. to energy pr yeah. productivity. It also, in the United States, it's very important that um, when we put these strategies for policies together, that they be nonpartisan, that they not be something that the Democrats and the liberals yes. want, but the conservatives don't. I think you yeah. may have some of that here in Germany. Yeah. Um, so what, what we have said is this is what can happen for the economy. And what happens for the economy is huge. It's $327 billion dollars a year okay. that we would save in 2030. Now, that's a big, big number. It doesn't mean a lot to Americans. So we look, took a look at what that means to every family. Mm -hmm. Every family in the U.S. would save over $1,000 a year yes, $1, on their dollars. energy bills. Mm -hmm. And that's effectively the amount of money that would be needed to wipe out all consumer credit credit card debt in the United States. So it's huge. If, if you're a, a hawk, you know, somebody that's a conservative and, and looks at energy security as your main driver, if we were to be as energy productive as we plan to be yeah. in 2030 and yeah. double it, we would reduce our imports of energy by $100 billion dollars a year. There's been a big push in the U.S. for years to yeah. make us energy independent. Yes. This gets us a long way there because if we double energy produ productivity, we only will require 7% of the energy mm -hmm. we used to be imported. So huge, huge there. If you're an environmentalist and you're looking at it from a climate change perspective, doubling energy productivity sure. is the best climate legislation that we can yeah. put through. It would lower our emissions of CO2 in the U.S. to a third below what they were in 2005. So roll us okay. all the way back to 2005 and slash emissions by a third. So We believe that that's the reason that the president embraced the goal. There's all these great things that will happen for our mm -hmm. economy. Um, and we believe it's the reason that the Congress will embrace it as well in businesses. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds absolutely sin senseful. But, I mean, if you urge policymakers and, 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 and people in the private sector, um, you need them to take immediate and concerned action now, not right. just 
in 10 years. Uh, are you optimistic they follow? Yes, we're very optimistic, yeah? actually. Uh, yeah, because the, um, the, the key leaders in the Congress are on the energy committees, so in the House and the Senate, they're talking to each other, and they've said that energy efficiency is a sweet spot. It may be the one thing on national energy policy that we can do. Um, we, the states are already in the United States really moving forward on energy efficiency. The president has called to create an energy efficiency race to the top for the states, oh, to put them in competition okay. with each other, mm -hmm. and to put out $200 million in incentive money so that if they take action and they put policies in place, they can be rewarded with those funds coming to their states. So we think there's a lot of interest. Um, mm -hmm. th our recommendations have already been adopted by the city of Boston. Boston's Green Commission. They've been adopted by a regional set of governments where I'm from in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And there's just been a huge amount of interest on Capitol Hill and in state government houses all across the U.S. in what we've put forward. So we're really optimistic. Okay. We wish you good luck for Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> energy efficiency needs to become a global aim, not just the U.S. or European aim. Absolutely. ASE is engaged in, uh, to form a worldwide network as well. Yeah. Uh, what is the current status quo? Well, about three years ago, we helped to stand up a sister organization like the Alliance yeah. to Save Energy here in Europe. In and it's Europe? called the European Alliance to Save Energy. And it is headquartered in Brussels. And it's focused at the EU level policies. And I think they're making tremendous strides in making sure that energy efficiency remains high. And I say remains high mm -hmm. on the EU um, agenda because it's been there for a while. Yeah. We also helped to stand up a sister organization in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a, a country where they're just doing really important work in the energy efficiency space. So we have, it's called the A2SE, the Australian Alliance mm -hmm. to Save Energy. And then we also started a uh, sister organization in India. So we've started to populate these organizations around the world. None are quite as big as we are, but they've only been around anywhere from two to five years. Mm -hmm. We've been around for 35. So okay. we see good things. And it's a, it's a great way for us to network and bring policymakers from those key areas together mm -hmm. and to cross-fertilize. Good ideas don't start or stop at a country's borders. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that they flow past and that we learn from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wish you all the, all the best for that. Thank you for this short overview of what's happening in terms of energy efficiency in the U.S. and from the ASE. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Red Couch VIP talk about energy efficiency, the quickest, easiest and cheapest road to a new energy future. Live at Hanover Fair 2013. After a short break, we will continue with the exciting second part of our VIP talk, where Kateri Callahan has to answer on five statements, oh no. which is simply <laughs> right or wrong. Please stay online. <laughs>